there are hundreds of videos out there that explain how to buy bitcoins, but there aren't almost any resources that take you step by step through the process of buying altcoins, or in other words, the hundreds of other cryptocurrencies that are currently available on the market. Everybody wishes they could have bought into Bitcoin five years ago when Bitcoins were less than $20 a coin. And right now there are hundreds of alternative cryptocurrencies that are trading for pennies, dollars, or even a few hundreds of dollars, but they're considerably more difficult for the average person to acquire, especially if you live in the United States. So this video, I'm going to walk through exactly how you, no matter who you are, can easily buy any altcoin or other cryptocurrency or token that you want. Looking at coin market cap, the top five cryptocurrencies, uh, four of those five are currently supported at Coinbase and GDAX, which is the same thing. Um, but the number four right now is Ripple, and currently you cannot buy that on Coinbase, um, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, and then that means that six through however many hundreds of coins there are that are available uh, to trade and buy are not available. So let's figure out how to uh, buy these coins. So if you are not registered with Coinbase, that's the first thing you need to do is register at coinbase.com. Registration is easy and simple. Just need first name, last name, email address, password, and certify your age. You will need to verify your email address. And once you've verified your email address and done a couple security questions, um, hopefully you will add your phone uh, for phone verification before making transfers or adding Google Authenticator. Um, the next thing you're going to do is log in to gdax.com. Now gdax is actually the same company as Coinbase. gdax is the um, exchange that Coinbase operates on top of. Coinbase was designed for really anybody to be able to use it. gdax is not quite as user friendly. However, the reason I'm telling you to go to gdax and sign in and make sure you have an account there is because you will save a lot of money. Coinbase charges fees for every single transaction and they will also charge you a futures price. They will they will jack up the price of the currency you're buying. So if Bitcoin is trading at $15,000 right now, you will most likely have to buy it for $15,200. In addition, you'll have to pay a percentage fee to Coinbase um, after you pay the minimum fee. If you go to GDAX, you won't have to. Because they both use the same database, you should just be able to click the sign in and you should immediately um, have an account. You won't have anything in the account. Um, I've blurred some of these details, but as long as you can log in, you're good to go. If you're having any trouble, um, just make sure that you're using the same password, the same email, or try to create a new account and just go through the steps. It's very simple. Next, you're gonna go back to Coinbase. You're going to click on the settings. You're going to click on linked accounts and you're going to link a new account. It's a blue button. And you're basically going to add your bank account for AHC transfer. This will take four or more days. Um, you can pay for Bitcoins and Litecoins and Ethereum with a credit card but the fee you will be charged is even higher. So it's really not recommended to do this unless you need Bitcoins today or you need Ethereum today. Because each bank is different, I'm not going to walk through every single step for linking into account. Hopefully you can figure it out. If not, you might want to call your bank. Next, you're going to go to the accounts tab on Coinbase. You're going to scroll down to where you see USD wallet. You're going to click on it and you're going to click on uh, deposit. The pop-up um, will show up then and you're going to click on the bank deposit and you are going to select the bank account that you added. Um, keep in mind you might need to verify or you will need to verify that you you uh, that, that is your account so that might take um, a bit of time uh, and once you once that's all verified you will you know select the amount that you want to fund your Coinbase account with and you will hit continue. You can also uh, do a wire transfer and that will usually be a little bit quicker, but you will also need to pay more. So once again, I don't advise you to do that. So at this point, we have not purchased any 
cryptocurrency. We've not purchased any Ethereum or Bitcoin or Litecoin. We've simply funded our Coinbase account. Why didn't I just tell you to buy Bitcoin or buy Ethereum? Um, well, the answer is there are no fees to deposit money into your USD wallet. Absolutely zero fees. They won't charge you a dime. So all you know, 100 or 500 or 1,000 of your dollars will go straight to your Coinbase account. Whereas if you were to buy Ethereum with your bank account, you would still be charged a much higher fee. So just to reiterate, even if you're paying for Ethereum or Bitcoin or Litecoin with a AHC transfer, you're going to be charged a huge fee on Coinbase. If you decide you want to do a lot of cryptocurrency trading, this will add up to a sizable amount after a small number of transactions. So you're going to wait for a little bit of time and when Coinbase lets you know that your funds have arrived, you're going to go to GDAX, not Coinbase, you're going to go back to GDAX. And on the main kind of homepage, once you're logged in, uh, I believe it's forward slash trade, you're going to look up at your balance in the top left hand corner and you're going to click deposit. There are several options. You're going to select Coinbase account and you will be able to send your funds directly from your Coinbase account to your GDAX account. There will be no fees and it will be instant. The same goes for any cryptocurrency that you have in your Coinbase account because in reality they're not actually transferring accounts. It's really just moving it from one display to another since both of these websites use the same database. So it is possible to select a source being your Coinbase Bitcoin wallet, your Coinbase Ethereum wallet, or as we funded the USD wallet. You're going to select however much money or however many Bitcoins if you so happen to have Bitcoins in your Coinbase account and you're going to click deposit funds. It's also possible to um, do it directly from a bank account um, and you can also send money directly from a wallet uh, on your computer but I'm assuming that you are a novice at cryptocurrency trading. Um, even if you're not though, you, you, can, you can send Ethereum directly to your DDAX account from a wallet that you might have. With your new funds, you are going to look up at the main menu bar and select Ethereum slash USD. Or you can select Litecoin slash USD. At the moment, Bitcoin has enormous transfer fees that make it really unusable for sending small amounts. And by small, I mean under $1,000 you're going to pay 15 or more in fees. So if your primary goal, which I'm assuming it is, is to buy a lesser known cryptocurrency, what we're going to be doing is buying Ethereum and transferring it to another account that you can't fund with a United States bank, but you can send Ethereum to it and then trade Ethereum for any currency that you want. So after you select Ethereum to USD, you're going to see two options, buy and sell. Buy should be automatically selected in green. You can click on your balance and pre-fill your full balance into a buy order, or you can select a smaller amount of your balance. A market order will be automatically highlighted, and this will simply purchase a set amount of Ethereum at the current market price. The price chart in the middle of the screen shows you the fluctuation in price based on the trades. So if you would like, you can actually select limit and set a maximum you want to pay for Ethereum and put in an order and it will sit there and wait. And if the price begins to lower down to what you set your maximum price, you will have the order automatically execute. If your price, if it, if it does not come down to the price that you were hoping for, uh, your order won't execute. So if you are new to this or you want to get Ethereum as fast as you can, then the smartest thing to do would just be to place a market order. When you hit place buy order, the funds will be immediately in your account. Now you are going to go to Binance and register a new account. You can think of Binance sort of like GDAX, except it has support for all sorts of different cryptocurrencies that are being traded. You're going to click register a new account, fill in essentially the same details that you did on your Coinbase account, and click register. You will need to verify your email, and if you are smart, uh, if, you, if you want to be secure, you will also use a Google Authenticator um, setup. If you are from China, SMS messaging 
is also supported for security. I would highly recommend going through the steps to enable Google authentication. You just download it onto your phone and scan a barcode. And each time you go to log in from a new computer, you will need to pull out your phone and type in a new generated code. Once you've done this, you're going to find the little avatar on the top right hand corner and click on account. This will take you to your account page where you can see that right now your 24 hour withdrawal limit is two bitcoins. So for almost every normal trader, this will be more than enough. If you are trying to trade or if you're trying to withdraw more than two bitcoins, you're withdrawing, uh, you know, around $30,000 give or take at the current going rate. Um, so that's quite a bit. Um, most people won't run into this problem. However, if you do need to withdraw more than that, you can simply submit verification documents and you will be upgraded in 24 hours or less. Uh, that's what it was for me. I can't guarantee that Binance will be that quick, but I was upgraded in, in less than a day from when I submitted my verification documents. And at that point, you'll be able to withdraw 100 Bitcoins from your account every single day. One of the reasons I am highly recommending Binance is because their fees are incredibly small. They're actually even smaller than GDAX, which is, like I said, considerably smaller than Coinbase. So this is really where you want to do all of your trading if possible. Next, you're going to click up on your avatar again, and you're going to click on the little button under your account, which will say um, your estimated account value. That will take you to a deposits and withdrawals page. In the little search box, you're going to type in ETH, which is the ticker symbol for Ethereum. Several will show up because ETH is um, in several different ticker symbols and names. You're going to want to select the black reg regular old Ethereum. It's the only one with a coin name ETH and the name uh, just Ethereum. There is Ethereum Classic and, and several others. Just ignore those. And you're going to click on the deposit box. Now what we're going to do is basically just, we're just gonna send the Ethereum you purchased from GDAX over to the Binance account that you just created. An Ethereum address, an Ethereum deposit address will show up. You're just going to copy that address and you're gonna go back over to your GDAX account. You're going to click on accounts and you'll see um, all four or five, uh, I believe it's five, yeah, all five of your accounts. You're gonna select the Ethereum one and you're gonna click the little up arrow. Um, it's highlighted on the screen. Uh, you're gonna click that little arrow and you're going to withdraw funds. You are going to select ETH address, so Ethereum address, because you're not moving it back to your Coinbase account. You're going to paste in the destination address and I'm assuming you want to spend all of the Ethereum you bought on your altcoin of choice. So I would click the little max button and it will automatically put in the full amount of Ethereum that you purchased earlier. Most likely, I think it's even required now, you will put in a um, SMS code or some type of authentication code to confirm it's really you trying to withdraw the funds, and boom, they will be transferred over to your Binance account. It might take a little bit of time, so once you've hit submit, click on the little history hyperlink on the deposits and withdrawals page of Binance, and it will take you to incoming transactions, and you'll be able to watch as the Ethereum network confirms your transaction. After a short amount of time, uh, 30 minutes or less, sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes less, uh, you will see the available balance in your wallet on Binance is now credited with the amounts from GDAX. There is always going to be some type of network fee. This is not given to Binance or GDAX. This is the network fee that the Ethereum network uses to power secure transactions. So whatever that is will be subtracted. It is much, much, much less than Bitcoin. Um, so you're, this, that, that is the smartest right now, uh, the smartest currency to send around. Next, you're going to go over to the exchange, and I'd highly recommend starting with the basic exchange. That's all you're really going to need. Click on basic, and it will take you to a page that looks a lot like the GDAX page. There's going to be lots of little numbers running around and tons of ticker symbols and lots of information that you can pretty much ignore if you are new to this. You're gonna go over to the right the top right hand box under the navigation bar and this is where all of the exchanges are listed on the far left side you will see the current exchange that you are viewing right now my screen is viewing the ripple to ethereum conversion or the, the trade page for trading ethereum and ripple so if you wanted ripple 
this would be the right page to be on. Binance also supports Bitcoin to altcoin trades. So if you select the BTC tab, uh, that will bring up all of the pairs that you can exchange. But since we use Ethereum, we wanna make sure we've clicked that tab. Now, there's another little search bar and you can use that to find the altcoin symbol you want to purchase. If you don't know the symbol and you just know the full coin name, you should just go over to Google and type in you know, coin name and then the uh, full name of your coin and, and you'll be able to find it on, on, on one of the many websites out there. In this example, I'm going to look up Po. I think that's how you say it. And as you can see, it's, it's the only one that's PoE. I like to favorite all of the coins that I trade for quicker access. If you start the favorites tab to the left of the Bitcoin tab, um, will now store PO to Ethereum. You need to click on this pair though for G for Binance to change to that exchange if you were not on it by default. So you will know you're on the correct exchange if the top left hand corner says POE slash ETH. For your ticker symbol or coin symbol, it will be, you know, whatever your symbol is slash ETH. The main thing to take note of on this page is the graph in the center. If the graph is going straight down, it means that your currency is uh, plummeting in price. And if it's going straight up, it means that there is uh, not a probably strong demand for it and the price is increasing. Um, so if it's relatively flat, it means that it's probably a good time to buy and you might as well just place a regular old market order. However, uh, if you would like, you can place a limit order. This works the same way as GDAX, except in this scenario, or in, on, on this exchange, uh, the limit is automatically selected, whereas GDAX had the market order automatically selected. So a market order is a little bit more simple. You simply place how many you want to buy at the current going rate and Binance will buy it for you. A limit order is where you place a specific price per coin and how many coins you want. And it will not place the order until someone is willing to sell you the coin at that rate. So with any Bitcoin or Ethereum conversions, the, the amount for small new altcoins is going to be very small. So be very, very careful when you type this price because there's gonna be a lot of zeros and a lot of numbers. It can be seven digits, eight digits long. Binance will automatically fill out a reasonable limit price that it has based on the past couple hours or past 30 minutes going rate. So if you leave in the auto-filled price, there's a good chance that that's a decent, uh, it's a decent going rate. Um, so like you're not getting ripped off at that price. And it's very safe to get a fill. It's very likely that someone will sell you at that rate. If you place it considerably below this, you might be waiting for quite some time before your order is finished, um, if it ever does. If a, if a coin shoots to the moon, your order will never be filled and you will not have that coin and your Ethereum will be sitting in Binance. The market order, like I said, is much more simple and you will simply get however many coins you can buy at the, the current coin rate. There's a nice little percentages box under here. If you want to say, spend 25% of your Ethereum on one coin, 25% on another, and 25% on another, or 50-50, um, you, can, you can get a nice percentage auto fill with that. See, I'll fill out the 25 and the 50, uh, and as you can see, it's, it's half of however many we can buy. Here I've got a little arrow just uh, showing you the current rate all the way over at the right of the graph um, in relation to the current limit price that I inputted. So you can see we've inputted the exact same number. So if I had an amount there and I clicked buy, it should be filled. Assuming you have an immediate order filled, you will just go back up to your little avatar, click on estimated value to return to the deposits and withdrawals page that has all of your wallets and search for PO. And as we can see, um, our total balance for POE is uh, one or 11.6, that's what we filled. Um, and so there we go, I've just bought POE, POET, um, a coin that is not available on another exchange that I could have easily traded for as an American citizen. Uh, also, it's not worth trying to fund your Binance account with United States dollars. Um, your bank isn't gonna like it or your credit card is gonna decline it or something bad is gonna happen. Um, if you're thinking about looking at another exchange, I highly recommend Binance um, just because it's there's no verification required until you want more than two Bitcoin withdrawals. So um, kind of hands off 
Uh, I don't know that they've been hacked or anything recently, but you never want to leave a large amount of tokens or um, coins in your in any online exchange, Coinbase, GDAX, Binance, none of them. You always want to pull them to a secure wallet. But if you are trying to day trade or swing trade and want to immediately be able to buy and sell coins at the drop of a hat, and you're trading with less than $1,000, it's usually worth it to just leave it in the Binance account. You also want to always do your own due diligence and look up the network fees for transferring coins uh, that you buy because if they're, you know, nothing right now is anything like Bitcoin, but you don't want if to, you, if you move your coins around too much, you'll start to lose coins based on the fees you're having to pay to relocate them. To withdraw coins from Binance, you just go over to the withdrawal. You will enter in the address of whatever cryptocurrency you purchased, um, well, the, the address to the wallet that supports whatever cryptocurrency you purchased. And uh, that is it. You will just withdraw it. If you have any questions about uh, anything I've said, feel free to leave a comment below. If this video was helpful to you, give a little thumbs up just so I know I did something useful.